but, but yeah. you don't see Chelsea fans and Manchester City fans complaining that and, and rioting and wanting to get rid of their owners because they're greedy and it's all about money and football. They say nothing. They're happy. Yes. They don't want their sugar daddies sending away. Yes. They want them. They desperately want to keep them right. because they've made them what they are. And the hypocrisy, again, is mind-blowing. <laughs> the, the, they're trying to tell us they don't want a sugar daddy and that's exactly what they fucking want. Oh, yes. Well, if it, if you, you, you look it. at this stupid idea that this Daniel Eck yes. is going to buy my Arsenal For... and everybody's saying, oh, that's what we want. Everybody on board. Henri coming on Sky trying to promote it. It's not financially viable for a start, mm. but what they actually think is that he'll spend money. He'll become a sugar daddy. And because he's an Arsenal fan, he won't mind losing a billion pounds to win a trophy. They must... Fucking get real. Yeah. It's absolute madness. He's, he's not got enough money for a start to buy it, mm. to even tempt Cronky to sell. They're talking about uh, 1.8 billion offer coming in this week for it. 1.8 billion? You, you can add another billion to that before Cronky would even consider it. But remember, the club is worth, um, I think it's 4.2 billion. 2.2 billion. billion. Cronky owes approximately 800 million pounds for to buy up uh, um, 100% of the shares, right? And apparently, his wife, who is the Walmart um, uh, hires, his wife is a Walmart hires, the biggest, uh, re- one of the biggest retailers in the world. Uh, with every, every 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 family member is worth billions. By the way, Georgia, <laughs> every 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 son and daughter of um, Sam Walton is worth billions. I have to tell you how much money that you know that empire is worth, right? But do these guys think that he would go and lose money on the deal? What are you thinking? You bought the club. You you uh, you put eight hundred million dollars. You borrowed eight eight hundred billion pounds from a bank for a club that's worth two point two billion two point two billion. Would you accept one point eight? How are you? What about what about the money you borrowed? <laughs> where is profit in this? I don't know where, where people are thinking. And these are and then and then Daniel. Yeah, you, Daniel and, and Daniel, you've got to look beyond that as well, Shatter. Let's say the, the club's worth two point two billion. That, that's what Forbes are you at? Yeah. Yes. Plus, he'd have to pay him a premium on top of that. Right. But it's his friend, it's it's his business model, owning clubs, owning sports clubs. Yes. So he's not going to want to set a precedent on that score either. That is a sucker. What if, That's... What, <laughs> what if he decided to sell up? Yeah. Right? What's he actually saying there? You forced me out. You know I didn't want to leave. But go on then. You've, you've all... Gone to the stadium with your A4 and your bed sheets. Uh, I can't stand this. It's too much stress. Uh, even though I don't know it's happening because nobody's told me yet. <laughs> but I'm going to leave. I'm going to sell up. It doesn't make any sense. Then every other franchise that he has, the fans go, hang on a minute. <laughs> we could do that. Yes. We could get him out. Yes. Let's get our bed sheets and A4 going at the stadium. Right. So he can't. He can't allow that precedent to happen. He can't allow it to happen. No way, George, because the, the Denver Nuggets, the LA Rams and all, the ice hockey team and, you know, whoever else he owns, they, they, you're correct. I mean, he's, he's the value of his investment. In fact, now, um, the, the people on Wall Street would say, well, we, you know, Cranky takes takes flight at the first opportunity when he comes under pressure. Let's discount the value of his investments in these, in these assets. It's not going to happen, people. You are, it's, you know, it's, you're talking about you going up against big money. I just spoke about how big Walmart is, but Cronky is a big, 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 big person. He's one of, what they have him as one of the top 20 billionaires in America. Something like that, George. He's, he's up there. I don't, don't quote me on this. I, you're talking about establishment. This is politics. You, it is not. You know, Tim Payton doesn't have two, two, two nickels to rub between his ass. He's, 
there's no, he's can't you you know when these guys George we spoke about this yesterday. What happened at Manchester United on the weekend? Will the the establishment is not going to allow that to happen on the Emirates on Thursday? It's they are going. The Metropolitan Police will be out in force. You are not going to destroy the, the the prospect of Arsenal getting into the the Premier the the the, the, the Champions League. I, I don't see it. This is they, they are not going to allow it. No, I mean, in an hour, I wouldn't allow either. I'd have snipers on the gantry at Sky Sport. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have a minefield outside the, in, outside the stadium. And, uh, but it's just the delusion of fans, mm -hmm. you know. They, they don't even know what they want. They don't even know the consequences of what they want. Mm -hmm. You know, I see people saying, Thierry Henry coming on saying, Suggesting that uh, fans might get a, a representative on the board if his boy Daniel Ek gets the uh, gets the club. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that these fans that have campaigned for years to get rid of the only guy who was actually holding the club together? Yes. <laughs> give them a bigger voice on on the board. You know the whiny little fox that oh, are yeah. doing a power grab. That's yeah. all it is. It's a power grab because because they're delusionally thinking that they've stopped the Super League. They've now promoted themselves into thinking not only can they stop things, but they can run things. <laughs> These fucking people have no idea. They don't know what they're up against, George. They don't know what no. they're up against, and uh, the. Uh, and because, you know, it, because it's true, Shotter, yeah. that football is a business. We don't like to think it, but it's a business. Yes. And these are big businesses. And these are big business men. These are countries, countries sometimes, yes. Yes. that have invested in football as an advertising slogan. You know, Manchester City have spent billions to promote their country. And their image. To get some sort of credibility to it. So if people will talk about Manchester City, they'll, they'll be linked to Manchester. When you mention Abu Dhabi, what do you think of now? Man you Man think of Manchester City yeah. and all the good things, all the cups they win, all the beautiful football they play, yeah. all the infrastructure that they've built around Manchester. You think of all the positives about Abu Dhabi. We don't think about the... The slave um, labor, the slave labor, George. We don't stone to death. Yes, and the in, slave in, labor. <laughs> you know, it's ridiculous. Yes, and that's what they—that's why they invested in it. Yes, they, you think Sheikh Mansour actually gives a flying fuck about the sporting excellence of Manchester City? No, he only thinks about what winning and dominating will give his country as a promotion or two. And uh, people don't understand, they don't understand what's going on. Well, and, no. and they think that they can they can have us they can tell these people mm -hmm. how to run their football club. Can you imagine? They have a plan. Cronky, Hen John Henry or whoever it is wants to do something, and some fucking idiot from a fans association puts the kibosh on it. Because they've been given fifty one percent of the voting rights, <laughs> they, oh, and they don't and they don't have anything to lose, George. They don't have a a, a a a penny. They have no skin in the game. Yes, we did have nothing, so they can say what they want. I'm sitting in board meetings <laughs> and and privy to corporate secrets. No, it's not going to happen. I haven't seen it. I've worked, I've worked in business for years, George. You know that. It's not, I just don't see it. <laughs> anyway, George? Well, it can't work. Shut up. It can't work. Mm. It simply can't work. This notion that you give them 1% of the club, club and you... shares, but they get 51% of the voting rights is the most ridiculous, ludicrous thing I've ever heard at this stage. It's like, it's like going to somebody's house, knocking on the door and saying, look, 
you know, I know you bought this house 10 years ago for a million pounds, uh, but we want you to sell half of it to us for £2.50. Yes. <laughs> you know, he said, well, what are you talking about? Get off my garden. Yeah. Get out yeah. for a shoot you. George. Set the dogs on them. Yeah. I'd yeah. set the dogs on Tim Payton. That's what I'd do if I was Stan Conkey. I'd invite <laughs> them to the, into the boardroom on the pretext of talking about running Arsenal, and I'd set some dogs on them. You know, George, and we're going to wrap this up in a few, uh, but George, the thing that makes me dis not, not despondent, but I used to think that Arsenal fans were more, you know, the most sensible, realistic fans they were. Then I realized they were just like most other fans, George. You know, they... Anyway, um... I, 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 I'm on Twitter and I see, you know, people uh, who you and I, you know, internet friends with, you know, when, th you know, when the going was good, George, when we were top four and we were flying, they were all singing Arsene Wenger's praises and they were the most sensible people in the world. And it, it just pains me to see some of them fall for this nonsense. We're, you know. I am. I don't want to. I'm not piling in on you, you, you know, on these people. But I'm. I'm saying, stop. Think for a minute. There was a reason why Arsene Wenger said top four was a trophy. There's a reason why Arsene Wenger paid higher salaries because to keep the good players, because he couldn't go and get the best players. But if he could get some good players to keep you by playing, but you. To this day, you are doing this hindsight and not recognizing that that was a legitimate policy that kept us competitive, and it 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 pains me, George, because uh, you know we I could have predicted, you know, we we not we could have we predicted that if we we diverted from this path, we would be in the position that we're in today, desperately hoping to beat Villarreal on Thursday. And yeah, it has happened so far. Do, yes. Uh, I, I wish we do. Yeah. Anyway, you depressed me again. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> but why are our people, George? The question is. The question is for all our listeners: Why we refuse to face reality? Why we don't want to deal with the harsh? We are, in my opinion, George. And you said, I asked you last, asked him, you know, I, I know I have a handful of followers. If we had Bielsa, where would we finish? And you said fifth, right? I had yeah. said we'd finish top four, but you were, I think you were being quite realistic. You knew there were four other clubs ahead of us. But most of our fans refuse to accept that. Why? Because they don't want to. It's as simple as I keep saying the same thing week in, week out. They want hope. They want to believe. It's this. All the evidence points to Mikel Arteta being a very poor manager. Yeah. We're getting worse and worse and worse. He's making mistake after mistake after mistake, and yet people somehow want to see that he's doing a good job. They'll tell you, "Oh, he won the FA Cup," and I tell you, this is another danger. How many times do you? Do we get the answer? We won the FA Cup. As yeah. if that's a cover-all for everything else that's going wrong. Well, if we win the Europa League, oh, yes. that will be magnified ten times. Oh, yes. Because oh, they'll, mm -hmm. they'll say, oh, he won a European Cup. That's mm -hmm. more than Arsene did in 22 years. Yes. Well, of course, Arsene never got to play in this European Trophy because we were never that bad yeah, uh, to play in the Losers' Cup. Yeah. And I think he played in it twice from memory and he got to, he never failed to get to at least the semi final. And that was playing with his worst teams because that was the years that we were in it because yeah. we were playing very well. Yes. Those, and he still got to the semi final because it's a poor quality cup. I think the last but time was 95, 96. Oh, They'll no. say, oh, give him more time. He won us a European Cup. He won us a European trophy. And we'll have another batch of people 
eulogize 